Hi everybody, Andrew Cuneo back again. Today I'm going to be playing some standard and I'm going to be trying something a little bit different. I, I've been playing a decent amount of standard and my, uh, my, my current favorite deck is the Esper Control deck I made a video on a few, a few weeks ago. I do think that's a really strong deck. I've also been impressed by mono red decks. Um, beyond that, I don't know, like the Esper Legends deck is fine. But I was curious, why doesn't anybody play Oni Cult Anvil decks anymore? And I never really tried this Obnixilis Captive Kingpin card when it came out in Aftermath, so I wanted to give it a little bit of a try. Um, I also wanted to try playing more of a, a sack package to, to deal with opposing creatures rather than just playing like Go for the Throats or Shieldred Zedix or a card like that. So I've got some Bloody Betrayals to go with Corrupted Convictions and Scornblade Berserkers and an Eaten Alive. And then I've also got some Voltage Surges, so if somebody is unfortunate enough to play an artifact creature against me, I could Bloody Betrayal it and then sack it to kill something else. Uh, but at its core, I'm just trying to have an Oni Cult Anvil deck. I guess you can also Bloody Betrayal and sack creatures to Braids if you have Braids in play. Just pretty nice. So that, that's the, the basic core of the deck, is just like a red-black sack deck, trying to take advantage of Oni Called Anvil, some other sack synergies, and then obviously Oni Called Anvil is really good with Obnexilis, if you if you haven't seen those two cards together, because, you know, the, uh, the Oni Called Anvil deals one damage and then triggers the Obnexilis, which is nice. Uh, same thing with Voldaire and Epicure being really good with both of those cards as well. Looking at the lands, I've got only one Murex. I feel like I, you know, went light on those to, to give myself room to try a Mycosynth Gardens. Which, I don't know if, I don't really pay attention to, like, Legacy or Vintage. I don't know if this card sees play in those formats. It seems like it might. It seems like it could be a good card. It's just, uh, there aren't really that many good artifacts in... Certainly in standard, I was going to say at, at all on arena. I guess that's kind of not true. Historic, there are some pretty good artifact decks based around Esper Sentinel and Retrofitter Foundry, but I don't know if they're even interested in this Microsynth Gardens. But I wanted to try it as a way to get a second Oni Called Anvil, basically. Um, the way these Oni Called Anvil decks have worked in the past is, like, when you've got one going, you're doing all right, but once you get two going, it becomes pretty hard for opponents to kind of grind through you at that point. You just have really good inevitability. So I wanted that this is like a way to convert those one Oni Called Anvil hands into two Oni Called Anvil hands, at least in theory. So we're going to see how that plays out. Sideboard. Uh, I've got a bunch of stuff for Esper Legends. Like I, Lithometic Barrage is just obviously a very good card against Esper Legends. And I think Gix's Command is also a pretty good card against Esper Legends. Um, I've got some Vampire's Vengeances to uh, hopefully be good against Mono Red. Bear in mind that two of my cheaper creatures are Vampires. The Scornblade Berserker is not. And against a Mono Red deck, I'm going to take Razor Lash Transmogrant out of my deck, certainly. Uh, some Obnixiluses for uh, you know more controlling decks. And some Duresses. A couple of Braids. Nothing too special, and I... I if, in case you can't tell yet, I'm, I'm not really married to any of the numbers on any of these cards. This is probably going to be a video where I play a little bit and then uh, make some more revisions to the deck. But the goal is really to just kind of see what is Oni Cult Anvil good against, what is it bad against, and is this Obnixilis worth it? Not to jump ahead, but spoiler, I'm probably going to wind up concluding that it is a worse 4-drop than Shieldred, because... It's it's basically impossible for four drops to be better than Shieldred. It's a really boring card, but we're gonna try this anyway. So let's get to it. This is a serviceable hand. I wouldn't say it's exciting though. Mono no black. I'm not sure I actually want to voltage search this right away. I think I'm just gonna play the epic here.
you can't convert a Mycosynth Gardens into a blood token because it's non-token. It's very, very sad. So they did not pump their thing, meaning they probably have a removal spell of some sort in their hand. I was going to say, I hope they use it on Voltaire and Epicure, but that one in particular, they didn't really have a choice, so it wasn't a big win for me. I hope they don't have Shieldred in their deck. Spoiler, they're going to have it in their mono black deck. They always do. That's a good card. I think I'm just going to ignore the Trespasser for now. I'll voltage search the Evolve Sleeper so the Trespasser doesn't flip. I think it's a 4-3 Flying Trample at its base. I guess Graveyard Trespasser is another way to trigger this guy. I need to kill this, which sadly requires me to pay some life. I'll take that action. And I'll play this up next list and then hope I get to untap with it. I'm gonna guess I'm not going to get to untap with it. It's kind of unfortunate I don't have another creature in play just in case they have another Shieldred's Edict. I think I'm not going to block. If I block and trade there, I, I don't really have anything going on. All right, I'm going to get at least a turn with the Captive Kingpin. That's kind of cool. This says Flying Trample, otherwise known as Flample. something you good. Well. Does that count as something good? Not exactly. This is too many copies of Corrupted Conviction. Hoping to find an Oni Cult Anvil. I failed to find an only called Anvil. Guess I'm just gonna pass. Come on, something bad. That's not something bad. It's the bad form of Shieldred. So that counts for something. One here because of the graveyard trespasser trigger. And I'm doomed. Do I have anything in my sideboard that particularly helps me? I don't think so. Don't want to rest. Gix's command is kind of whatever. Certainly don't want Lithomantic Barrage. A Braid could be okay. Is it better than Voltage Surge, maybe? Maybe it actually is. You can kill the... Uh, what's that 3-3 prototype card that I killed? The Phyrexian something. The Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. I don't think I want any of that other stuff. I 
All right. I did damage on the first turn. Already ahead in the life total race. I'm gonna play a synthesizer the next turn, but not this turn. I think given that I know I'm gonna play a synthesizer next turn, I wanna have the sulfur springs in play, because it's gonna give me the maximum flexibility on colored mana. And I think I'll sit on the treasures. In the short or the blood on the short term. In case I find an only called anvil here. Really nice if Deadly Dispute was legal, instead of Corrupted Conviction. Swing and miss. Unfortunate. When you play with this card, you really have to keep your curve really low, which my curve is pretty low, but I do have some 3 and 4 mana cards. Alright, I'm getting... this is not a horrible... Exchange. I guess I'm losing four life. It's a costly exchange. But I think well worth it. Come on, something good. That's what I'd always wanted is sulfurous springs. Please no shieldred, please no shieldred. That's fine. I think I can eventually come back, but it's certainly going to cost six mana against my opponent's stack. Oh, it's not going to come back. And then by a trespasser. Come on, something good. All right, we're doing it. It's costing a lot, but I'm doing it. I really overpaid there. So far, this has not been a very auspicious start, but I, I haven't drawn an Oni called Anvil yet, which kind of built my whole deck around. For the sake of all innocent, I will must be. I bring my own army. Come on, land. Come on, land. Should have been more specific. Needed an untapped land. Dire time call for dire tactics. Hyrexian life will rise from patience. We will win. Guess I'm gonna start out by doing this. See what we find. We found some more lands. This isn't going great. Could I kill them if I find a bloody betrayal this turn? They would have to do nothing with their turn, which doesn't seem very likely given that they have the handful of cards and five mana. Six mana now. Maybe their hands all lands. Six lands. Man down. These two, three life are going to be a problem. Me now.
a lot of free cards off of the experimental synthesizers, but none of them have really helped me all that much. Graveyard is big enough that they can flip shoulder, but you know, no, it's only five mana, they actually can do it. That's fine though. It's not like I could win even if they didn't do it. My servant. I'm busy. There you are, finally. Just what I needed, just about six turns too late. I'm gonna do next turn. I'm gonna discard three cards and then get milled. Well, that sounds bad for me, but I was gonna lose anyway, so what difference does it make? Revision number one. I think I have too many Corrupted Convictions in my deck. And I think Eaten Alive may just be too bad to play with. It's a shame you can't target yourself with Shieldred's Edict. Well, I guess it would be targeted removal then and it'd be easier to stop. But you can't make the play of Bloody Betrayal and then Edict yourself to get rid of a creature. I guess you could Bloody Betrayal and like take the creature you don't want to die to the Edict and then Edict them. I don't know. These cards don't. These two cards don't work together great, that's for sure. Is this a good can to keep? And if this land came into play on tap, that might be about it, but no. All right. My guess in the gardens, you're not looking that strong. There's a decent chance this dies to cut down here, but having the Oni called in Anvil and play a turn earlier doesn't really advance my board at all. So, I didn't just do that. Maybe that was a mistake. I actually, well, it didn't work out that badly for me because they didn't have anything to do with their mana on turn two, so they certainly would have played the cut down on turn two had I sequenced in the other way. make this appear. I decided it wasn't that important. Come on, play an artifact creature. You're not an artifact creature. Oh, that's a nice draw.
Bloody Betrayal doesn't look like it's doing anything for me right now, so let's move on. I'm mostly doing that because I want I want to trigger the Oni Called Anvil on my turn. And I de definitely don't want to discard the Mirax because I'm probably just going to use it. Siphon Insight. Good luck getting anything good out of my deck. this a lot this kind of deck I, I always find it surprising because it doesn't seem like the cards are very good I'm not really sure what the appeal is to people oh I was going to say they have Scornblade Berserker in their deck too but they don't it's mine they just have my Scornblade Berserker not gonna sack the token to the Scornblade Berserker just because they have the Fairy Mastermind in play. So I would be giving them two cards. I think I'm just gonna... do this. Keep the damage going. And next turn, at least, I'm, well, on the end of their turn, I'm going to make a creature with Mirax. It's annoying that they have this 1-2 blocker. Who knew a 1-2 blocker would be so good? Scornblade Berserkers. I think this is a good turn to crack the synthesizer and see what's up. Okay, now that we know we're not going to have enough mana to activate Mirax this turn, let's play the Scornblade Berserker. Buff up one of those guys. And then I can crack one of my Scornblade Berserkers on their turn to get a card back. Without triggering the Fairy Mastermind. That's how this card works, right? So draw your second card on the turn. Which they can always trigger that if they want to spend four mana on it, but I kind of don't feel like they're going to spend four mana on it. Maybe now that they've got two of them out. They're still probably not in actually very good shape, just because their deck's probably not good at beating a steady onslaught of small creatures. Well, that is a good card against what I've got going on. best Scornblade Berserker life.
targeting is targeting this. Oh no, they're getting too light from this. I don't like that. Second Mirex. I'm not that worried about the Mirex. Sure. That I'm not very happy to see. So I can gain six life by just using the Fairy Mastermind on my turn. This is going to be a hard game to win. I don't think I want to sack a guy to drain them. Might need to be trying to play for a slightly longer game. Realistically, though, the fact that I didn't draw a spell there means it's basically impossible to win. They are they are about to activate the Fairy Mastermind, so maybe if my top card is Bloody Betrayal. It's an experimental synthesizer. All right, I've got him down to 11. I didn't want to use my enemy called Anvil there. I'm going to use it to crack the synthesizer because I really need to find. I need a spell. I'm going to lose. Basically. It needs to be a pretty good spell as well. I don't think that does it. Bloody Betrayal at this point, that doesn't do it. I guess if I'm able to block, I don't, I'm not dead. Beginning to see what these people see in this deck. It's the Shieldreds. Uh, no, I am dead. Well, I guess I may, I may be dead. No, I can use only called Anvil in my. Upkeep. Never mind. I'm just dead to the two damage here. I needed to draw a voltage surge. I get, yet again, I feel like my sideboard does not help me at all. Is Voltage Surge better or worse than Lithomantic Barrage? They probably have Kaidos in their deck, either the three mana or the four mana one. Which, this Voltage Surge can hit Kaido pretty hard too. It was nice that game did. I, I did kill the first Shieldred with the voltage surge. Let's try it just the way it is one more time. All right, I've got the Oni called Anvil. I'm just missing the, the food for it. There's some food. I think I'm gonna just play raids this turn. Does that make sense? 
Like, I'm probably playing right into a removal spell or make disappear, but I want to play Obnexilus next turn, so I think that's okay. I really wish they had artifact creatures in the deck. Wait, they didn't kill Obnexilus. They didn't do anything. What do they got going on over there? Yeah, they got that. That's annoying. Enough with the mysteries. I've come for answers. And if you're next in step, you can play the card. So if I wanted to, I could sack the Oni called Anvil to itself, but I don't think I want to do that. One of your friends has to leave. Let's try copying in the Sony called Anvil. I think this is going to be good. I hope this is going to be good. Lame, boring. Lame. You won't be outsmarted. Lame. So if my top card, if I get an untapped land here, it's great. Untapped land, on time, please. It's not an untapped land. I think I want, I want to just kill this Liliana and keep these two cards in my hand. Failed to kill the Liliana. Sad times. Now you've got my attention. I'm gonna sack this in response to them plusing Liliana and reevaluate what to discard. I'm tired of your secrets. Oh, I need both of these. Oh, why did I do that? Now I don't get to draw a card? That was just stupid. That was just bad. Doesn't mean I didn't lose two life and shield was just beating me senseless, but it wasn't good. Things we'd rather forget.
My final game, get the shield right off the board. Next turn, maybe. Maybe not. We'll see, though. Oh no, now they can Liliana edict me. Ugh. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of personal space? This game, I think I would have won if I'd drawn a corrupted conviction instead of scoring Blade Berserker like five turns ago. Now I think it's too late to do much of anything. Take my zombies and leave. Yeah, I got destroyed by Liliana this game. I wouldn't think it would usually be a good card against this deck, but it was this game. That time I did actually sack it on, like, I think it was right to sack it there. Um, Nixilus. I don't think that's going to help me. It. The draw could have been worse. Alright, revision number two. We're not playing Voltage Surge anymore. We're playing Go for the Throat.
Ooh, something to play on turn one. I was going to be kind of just going turn two anvil into turn three synthesizer. Do I want to let my anvil get countered? So if they have make disappear, they might counter the epicure. These mono blue decks, they play like a lot of Impulse and Moment of Truth, I think is the name of the card. Isn't guaranteed that they're going to be able to counter this here. If they do counter it, it's pretty bad for me, but if they don't have a counter, well, they have disappear. I was going to say, if they don't have a counter, I'm actually in pretty good shape to win. Bloody Betrayals keep showing up, like, right when I can't quite use them. Bloody Betrayal is also going to be pretty bad against the Haughty Jin, I'd imagine. It's, it's going to be way better when it's on their side than it is on mine. There's the impulse I was hoping they would have on turn two. There's also the problem that these mono blue decks, they almost definitely have a bunch of stuff in their hand that just protects the Haughty Jin, like March of the Blue Mists, whatever that one's called. There's another one that they, there's multiple cards that phase their creatures out that they could they probably have in their hand. That's a pretty good draw. So now, if they counter this, I'm going to use the Blood Tithe Harvester to kill the Hobby Gen. All I can. Same thing with, with this one. If they counter the Blood Tithe Harvester, I'm going to use my other one to kill the Hobby Gen. And if they don't do that, I'm just going to attack them. Something good. It's a Valdaren Epicure. Pretty nice. Do this this turn. Should I wait for a turn when I'm gonna have an attack? I think I should wait for a turn when I'm gonna have an attack. Just because I, I think it's pretty likely if I play Bloody Betrayal there, they're just gonna phase the Haughty Gen out. And then I don't even, like, I'm not even gonna attack into the Tolarian Terror. Also, once I start fighting over this, if, they, if they're protecting it, it makes it grow really quickly. 
So at this point, I'm probably going to get... I'm going to get either two or three more turns, I would think. Probably two. I don't need to play around Make Disappear here. If they want to play the Make Disappear, they'd have to sack one of their creatures, so that's not a big deal. I maybe need to play around Spell Pierce plus Make Disappear. Oh, I didn't want to play my land because I thought I might want to sack it his blood. Uh, now I'm regretting that decision. not sure I made the right decisions with like what to sack there and whether or not to play that land. games keep feeling close-ish like if I had just if I had slightly better constructed deck I would be winning or at least putting up more of a fight but that's not how it's playing out maybe something like this this gives me three four five six removal spells for their creatures but this is also a matchup where, like, I don't want to just be, I don't want to draw a handful of removal spells and just be waiting for them to play their creatures because they'll just play Flow of Knowledge or whatever that flow card is called. And they'll just easily overcome my removal. Like, I need to be putting pressure on them. So I don't really want to board out my creatures. Suppose I could also board this in. That would be over creatures, like maybe these Scorn Blade Berserkers really aren't all that great. Mm. Obviously I'm going to be, my turn two is probably going to be discarding something to the blood to find a land. If I get lucky though and I, I draw a black land immediately, the sand gets really good. What's going on? Are they considering fading, hoping the Epicure? All right, did I just get really lucky or do they have spell pierce? They could have spell pierce. Hopefully they don't. Beginning to think they don't have spell pierce.
We did have Fading Hope, though. Nice. Hmm. So if they have make disappear and I just play the synthesizer. I guess that's okay. If they make disappear that, then I'll just play the Scorn Blade Berserker, but let's see if they actually have make disappear. The other option is to just play the Scorn Blade Berserker here. First, and then put a counter on the Epicure attack with the Epicure and Sack. I don't really want to sack my only creature that's able to attack right away though. On Redland. I'm pretty lucky with my top decks this game. Scatter Ray, haven't seen that one in a while. I kind of got two cards out of the Scorn Blade Berserker here. It's the anvil replace the token. I didn't get to sack the creature to the anvil to drain them for one. So far, these guys have been pretty lackluster. It seems like it's this is a card that it's kind of hard for it to be bad, but it hasn't actually been good either. Opponent got going on over there. More fading hopes. I don't really understand this mono blue deck. I play against it somewhat frequently, and it is pretty good against the Esper Control deck that I've been mostly playing. Like it, it's a pretty hard matchup for Esper Control. But I just I don't understand how how does their deck ever win if they play against mono red. It just doesn't seem possible to me, the way the deck is constructed. Uh, so my choices are play into their counter. Or just make a second Oni Called Anvil. I think I'm going to make a second Oni Called Anvil. It does cost me my land drop for the turn, but I don't know that that's really important. I guess I could also just casualty this thing. It is possible that they just want to play Thirst for Knowledge this turn. Gotta win. A new card all it took was taking all my bloody betrayals out of my deck. So 
It's about to say it's going to be a hard choice whether to play the Epicure on turn one or to guarantee the Blood Tithe Harvester on turn two. But I drew a land, so I get them both. I get it all. Also have a variety of Obnixiluses to play throughout the game, so that's going to be fun. This seems destined to be countered. Scatter Ray again. Is that the right one of these to be playing in the standard? Can you play actual Essence Scatter? I thought you maybe could. Holy cow, I'm Obnixilus flooded. This is more Obnixiluses than I've ever seen in one place. I'm going to make a devil token. It's the one that's going to have three loyalty if they both resolve. Because it's, it's less damage this turn, but it'll be more damage over the longer term. Right? I'm not even going to have the option. I've conquered entire play. That's not bad for me, though. <laughs> one leisure doing with you. It's good they're not just deciding to jam Haughty Jin there, because I would probably lose to that. A little bit of way... I can't quite play Tolarian Terror. Or at least not after the Impulse. They can untap and play it, I believe. Plead for mercy. Let's see if this resolves. Good. I want to go for a land drop. Probably should. Also, I, there's no way I'm going to play as many copies of Omnixilis over the course of the game. Let's be realistic. It is unfortunate that I gave up on that treasure. I think I'm going to try to kill the haughty gin. So if they're still getting priority there, it's not because they had like a scatter ray to be able to counter this. If they probably have another card like slip out back or blue march in their hand. I think I'm gonna get more damage out of the Devil token over the course of the rest of the game that I would have gotten from just plussing this one more time, which is obviously just two damage. It's all it's pretty much guaranteed I'm gonna get more damage because my this revenge. thing's gonna deal one damage unless they're fading hope. Oh, that's a lot of new cards. I don't like that very much. Surely this will resolve. It's 
almost guaranteed. They haven't countered it yet, but you would think if they had make disappear or scatter ray, it would have been automatic to counter. But they've also just been playing slow, so maybe they're just eating a sandwich, making a sandwich, hiring somebody on Fiverr to eat a sandwich for them. They could be copywriting a, a new kind of sandwich they've invented. They could be packaging a sandwich to ship it somewhere so somebody else could eat it maybe I'm sure whatever they were doing involved the sandwich that's the only thing I'm sure of I think they're starting to become a problem Assuming they have some way to protect the Haughty Jin, I cannot win this game. Not even sure if I draw into a removal spell and they can't protect the Haughty Jin, I can actually win, given that they have the, the Talarian Terror as well. What duress. I'm at least going to get to see what they had. What is it that you have? Show me. Let me see. Any of this stuff matters. Oh, I'm wrong. I should have taken Scatter Ray. Scatter Ray was obviously the choice. I forget. This is why this is better than Essence Scatter. All right. Well, that was enough punishment for me. They can't all be winners, can they? Um, aside from learning that I really wanted more removal that worked against Shieldred. I also just, I, I mean, I said this at the beginning, and I thought this card was going to be worse than Shieldred, and I think it definitely was. Like, it was, I didn't, I think I got to untap with it and play once, and there was a bunch of times when it was just hard to get to stick in play, but I also just lost to Shieldred a bunch, where if I had my own Shieldreds to counteract their Shieldreds, I could have, you know, played the rest of my deck. And I didn't get to, I didn't play against Mono Red at all, where I think this thing is obviously going to be way worse than Shieldred, because this is way less durable, and also just way less impactful when it's in play. Um, so yeah, I would cut these for Shieldreds if you're trying to improve upon this deck. But I think the rest of the idea is just, I, I don't know that there's actually enough payoffs for trying to use Oni Cult Anvil. Like, I think I had two of them in play one game, and I still lost to a Shieldred, which I think if my deck was a little bit better built, I would have won that game. But when I just had one of them in play, it, like, it didn't feel bad, but it, it wasn't that good either. I think maybe I need... I don't know if there's any more synergies you can have that are going on with this in just straight up standard. Like I could see where Braids plus Only Called Anvil would be pretty good, but it's pretty hard to get Braids to live as well. Um, 
So yeah, not... I'm at a bit of a loss for how to make more decks in Standard, because it really seems like there's just not... I, I, I've seen people say that with the, the bannings, they widened it up a lot. Not, they're like, Standard's wide open now. I really just don't think it is. Um, it, it's... People just haven't played it enough to, to narrow it down to the fact that like mono red and black mid-range decks are just still the best. Um, I don't know that there's much more to standard than that right now. Of course, we got the new set coming out in a little bit, and hopefully that shakes things up. So that'll be it for this deck. You'll probably never see it again. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.